if it was reported that Boris Johnson had thrown a Winnie the Pooh themed orgy in checkers that involved him running around the room covered in honey while people like Nadine Dorries, Jacob Rees Mogg, and David Frost queued up to lick it off him, would you, hand on heart, be shocked? Time. The first thing to do is, is just to pause for a moment and have a little giggle together, I think, don't you? It's a stitch up, it's a witch hunt, it's the woke mafia, it's the new elite, it's the anti growth coalition it's the tofu eating wokarati who is it who's stitching him it's the blob they're all stitching him up infamy infamy they've all got it in for me boris johnson and donald trump sound almost identical to each other not for the first time um and the difference is being that i think donald trump's probably still got a better chance of getting back on the horse than boris johnson has but this constant litany of whining they must get so tired don't you think? Taking responsibility for nothing. Nothing's ever their fault. Everything's a conspiracy. Everything's a witch hunt. Everything's a stitch up. Poor old Boris Johnson, 13 years in power, an 80 seat majority, over 80% of the UK media, absolutely supine in its sycophancy for his every utterance. And yet he is somehow the victim here. He is the one who is more sinned against than sinning. I, how do you keep that up? I, I, I honestly would love to know. I know you don't ring me anymore. I wish you would. I say that every day. But how do you keep up the idea that Boris Johnson is somehow, I don't know, more, more, more sinned against the sinning? The Brexit he sold you fell apart in your hands. And it, it, it was like the bloke in the transit van pulled up at the side of the road and told you he'd just been fitting some speakers in a millionaire's house around the corner and he had a couple left over that you could have for 25 quid and they were actually worth two and a half thousand. But he, he needed the cash because it was his kid's birthday and he had to get home quick. So you hand over your 25 quid and he gives you a box that says really expensive speakers on it. That's Brexit. You get home, you open the box, it's got two, two bricks in it. You just bought two bricks for 25 quid. That's Boris Johnson. That's what he does. He drives around in a transit van trying to sell expensive speakers to people that are in reality bricks. But you're still clinging to the idea that he is uh, hes a good lad. Still clinging to the idea that he's more sinned against than sinning. I mean, it is actually unbelievable when you turn to the front pages today. I, I mean, apart from the sensible ones, Johnson accused of new COVID breaches. That's all right. The Telegraph at least goes for it. But immediately, allies claim former PM is victim of political smear. Daily Mail, Boris threatens to sue Cabinet Office for COVID stitch-up. If you are a lawyer, could you, and this is a slightly rhetorical question in that I don't think there is an answer except he can't, could you give us a quick call and tell us on what possible grounds Boris Johnson could sue the Cabinet Office, headed up by Simon Case, who... I don't. Did he appoint Simon Case or did he inherit Simon Case? I think he appointed Simon Case because he thought he'd be a soft touch. Simon Case, of course, the man that brought the distant cousin into Downing Street after it's so hard to keep up. Richard Sharp had made Simon Case aware that there was this Canadian tycoon who wanted to guarantee a loan for Boris Johnson up to £800,000 that Richard Sharp failed to mention to the selection panel when he was applying to become chairman of the BBC. So, I, I mean, you see what I mean. Every rock you look under, do you know what you find? Ten more rocks. You look under them, do you know what you find? Ten more rocks. It's ridiculous. If it was reported that Boris Johnson had thrown a Winnie the Pooh themed orgy in checkers that involved him running around the room covered in honey while people like Nadine Dorries, Jacob Reese mogg and David Frost queued up to lick it off him, would you, hand on heart, be shocked? In direct contravention of all lockdown laws, would you, hand on heart, be shocked if Boris Johnson had thrown a Winnie the Pooh themed orgy that involved Nadine Dorries, Jacob Rees-Mogg, David Frost, the entire comment desk of the Daily Telegraph, at least, all five broadcasters I can think of off the top of my head, and approximately 30% of the Parliamentary Conservative Party queuing up to lick honey from his quivering torso. Could you? Would you? Would you really be surprised? Do you remember the chronology of crapulence? Number one, there weren't any parties. Number two, there were parties, but I didn't know about them. Number three, there were parties, but I did know about them, but I didn't go to them. Number four, there were parties, but I did know about them, but I did go to them, but I didn't realise they were parties. Number five, it's a fair cop, Gov. I'll pay the fine. How? How? What's the word I even want?
So I return to the well-trodden territory of Boris Johnson's utter moral corruption and the mystery of why people would put up with it. What is the word I even want? As families were saying goodbye to loved ones, essentially in hermetically sealed tents, Her Majesty the Queen sat isolated and alone on the very morning that members of Boris Johnson's top team had been staggering, slaughtered out of Downing Street at the funeral of her late husband. How, how bent do you have to be? How boiled does your brain have to be to see this man as anything other than a, than a deep, dark stain upon our democracy and our history?